Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to the One Club Per City experiment. This is part three. I am still in the five year part of this because I did forget to do one thing I realised whilst I was editing. I didn't show you the combined teams for Liverpool and Manchester five years in. So that's what they look like five years in. I figured obviously if I go five more years, ten years in the future, they're not going to look anything like the what they started as. The one thing I was most curious about and never followed up on actually was the Jordan pickford Allison situation. He stayed there the entire five years. He's only made 22 appearances over those five years. Very surprised he didn't move on. They signed Rhys James to be back up to Trent. We saw that one on the London side of things. And despite the fact I left them with Lucas Dina, they've now got Cucurello in at left back as back up to Robinson. So the only real remaining one other than Pickford is Richarlison. He's managed to stay here as a solid player. He's made 95 appearances. He's done all right. And then of course there's the actual player Everton, which amuses me so much. So then the Manchester squad's a little bit thinner on the ground. But you can see, still got wan signed Declan Rice from London, still got Maguire, still got Paul Pogba, still got Marcus Rashford in the team. De Gea edges out Edison, interestingly enough, so that one still playing back up to each other. I say De Gea edges him out, he's actually worth less, I'm not sure who's actually had the more appearances here. 70 appearances in 5 years isn't a great amount, so I think Edison actually is still first choice. Hard to tell because obviously Edison's here prior. Uh, Mason Greenwood's still here as well. So that's the combined Liverpool-Manchester teams. See you in 5 more years. For the 10 year part of this, just figured I needed to do this part to get you guys all caught up with everything that is relevant. See you in five years time or two seconds. Welcome to 2029. This piece of news caught my interest straight away. I thought I'd leave it on this whilst I just talk through this. We will be looking at managers a little bit more in this one just because I'll be 10 years in charge and the way the power balance may have shifted. It might be some surprising names attached to some surprising clubs depending on who's developed in the English leagues as a European regular let's say whether anyone over the last five years has made that fourth spot a regular spot or at very least the rest of european spaces there or thereabouts there might be a new top six for all we know but let's find out one thing that stands out straight away is that whilst liverpool did win the title by 12 points with 95 points same kind of ballpark we we're in last time there's a new team up there birmingham in third Right, we're going to have to see how this journey came about because 83, 82, 79, they have put themselves in the mix. Interesting that Foden went to Liverpool. I was, uh, hang on. Okay, only 36, thought he was older. Weirdly, Jude Bellingham's at Burnley before anyone asks. So this was a picture that we were looking at last time out. Top three still separated by almost 20 points from the rest of the pack. The following year sees the same clubs, in fact, just rearranged. Norwich getting Champions League football. I love that. I honestly do. But still a significant gap, although top end of it, less points than we saw last time around. And still sub-90 the following year. Derby getting European football in that one. And I think Brighton are a new face up at the top there. 81 points for Brighton, is, in fact, as well. So out of nowhere, Brighton just suddenly closed the gap entirely. A feat they don't manage again, although they do clearly win the Carabao Cup, denying Norwich European football as a result. But Newcastle end up in fourth, and London have dropped off a little bit in that year. And then Brighton back in the Champions League again, Manchester not even in the top four. So it's broken already by 2028, Leicester second. That's where the other one's gone in. And suddenly it's a much tighter contest at the top. Liverpool separated a little bit. So I'm curious to find out what happened here. And the current season is somewhat familiar Although Manchester do sneak back in again with Birmingham being the uh, upsetter in this particular particular year. So Birmingham not actually a steady rise as such. Not even in Europe since that first year, I'm pretty certain. Oh, since 2023. They've not even been in Europe since 2023. Mid-table, pretty much 11th in fact, almost every year. And then suddenly third. I'm curious to know who they've signed this particular year or what's happened. Because media prediction was 10th. Captain is Ben Goffrey. They've acquired Charlie Hawks. That was a player that came through early on in the youth systems. He was at, he was at London last we saw of him. So there was a consortium takeover in 2027. So we'll just very quickly have a look at transfers for the last couple of years and see if that reflects that. 90 to 93 million. By the way, shout out to John McGinn staying here for 10 years, along with Jack Grealish, in fact. Both moving towards the twilight of their careers at this stage. Yeah. Douglas Ruiz as well. Sticking around for 10 years. Shout out to those guys. But no, they've not massively spent these last couple of years, 92 to 80, keeping it fairly even. Just thought we'd have a quick look at those three combined 
locations again in terms of their squads. I can see Trent's still there at 30. Uar was a signing that we noticed back then. Harvey Elliott's still in the team. Aaron Ramsdale's playing backup. Pickford will be about 34. I think he's two years younger than Allison. So we might check out where he's gone. They've acquired Brecolo, Esposito. I think it was at Manchester last we saw. He was. He's gone via PSG to Liverpool. Otherwise, Ayers there. Felix. I can't remember if Felix was there last time we looked. I think he just signed for massive money, actually. And Tadebo's there as well. So not a lot of, obviously, the existing ones, particularly when it comes to Everton. Richarlison, probably way too old. He was the only one that was still kind of there. We'll just check out where Pickford ended up. Uh, Pickford's at Leeds at 34. No speed left on him, but he's at Leeds. Technically, actually pretty good. Didn't leave until 2025. Bless him. Curiously, Mourinho's manager of Manchester. I did notice that London did have a job opening. Could jump in. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. I can see two Manchester players actually still in the team, along with Bernardo Silva. But Juan Basaka still in the team. Declan Rice, an acquisition. We saw that one. Marcus Rashford still in the team. Uh, and that's about it. Almada, obviously wonder kid. Ampadu has made his way to Manchester from London at some point. Sterling still on the team of 34. And otherwise, that seems to be about it. This one I was a little bit curious about because obviously Manchester United have a few well-rated youngsters. Uh, Greenwood's wanted to double check out where he's ended up. Uh, uh, he's at Atletico Madrid with Tammy Abraham living his best life. Just moved this year, in fact, by the looks of things. I love that. Also, J Joshua Xerxes, another young striking wonder kid. How many How many did they want? Guendouzi's made his way to Atletico as well. Shirky and Solomon, two players that actually went to Manchester initially, we noticed. Atletico Madrid just become the club of the wonder kid, apparently. But yeah, Mason Greenwood and Tammy Abraham next to, next to each other. I love that. Abraham's on fire over here, by the way, just to, and then just to pop to their old club. Yeah, so they got an opening. Mount Tamori's still there. Jan Valerie for some reason. What? Oh, he's better on this than he is at my Southampton save. Still not amazing. But a few of the signings that we saw them make last time around, five years ago, still here. Lingley's there. Pellegrini's still there. Smith Rowe, actually, is still here ten years later. Saliba still here ten years later. Obviously, Tamori and Mount, we saw Deli Alley still here. Harry Kane, actually, still here at 35, although he's gone on loan somewhere this year. Valencia, for 35, 8 acceleration and 9 pace isn't that bad. But bless, all it took was merging the London clubs and the Manchester clubs for Harry Kane not to move. Although, weirdly, when he does move, he does tend to go to either City or Liverpool, I notice. Has gone to PSG once. I guess just reducing the number of options where he could go has made him stay. Also, the fact that London are obviously vastly better than the three clubs that they merged from probably helps. But yeah, 251 goals in less than 500 appearances is a fantastic return rate. No real change on the FA Cup front still. Actually, the last batch of them being uh, knocked out between London and Manchester. We did say Liverpool would do it in terms of the rotation there. Manchester, London, Liverpool, London, Manchester. It wasn't Liverpool. It was London for four years and then Manchester twice. At least Tottenham Stadium's trophy cabinet is a little bit fuller these days. In case you're wondering, I think I mentioned it, but I can't remember if I did or not. London London are playing in what is Tottenham Stadium, but with an increased capacity to match the Olympic Stadium, which has then been renamed Olympic Park because I named this the London Stadium. In case people ever see those stadiums pop up in internationals or finals or whatever, that's what's happened. The Tottenham Stadium is now the London Stadium, and what is the London Stadium, West Ham's, is now Olympic Park. Uh, the deadlock on the Carabao was broken by Wolves initially last time around, and Brighton have nipped one in as well. Liverpool a little bit more prolific in this, but still, still mostly those three. So the Champions Cup of course with three theoretically super strong English sides in it now these days sorry I'm just looking at this and Hertha Berlin are in the top list of seedings what what's happened in Germany okay but Liverpool Manchester on the recent winners list Juventus have grabbed one at some point just nip through the five finals Liverpool Inter Barcelona beat Manchester so there was one in that final this is what I mean though Old Trafford uh, Manchester play at Old Trafford by the way didn't clarify that either I just figured it had more of a history and a bigger capacity I think I'm not sure Manchester beat Inter the year before that's what we saw Madrid beat Manchester in that one and no English teams in that one in fact Real Madrid losing at Camp Nou it's listed as a neutral venue but for Madrid I know it's not their home ground, but not exactly neutral either, is it? Now, we do want to have, obviously have a quick nosy at the group stages because it was pretty much the main three getting through. We saw Leicester get out once in the first five years. Liverpool topped their group, of course, that year. We're really looking for Valencia, actually, topped London in that year. We're really looking for the fourth team. Leicester didn't get out of their group with Milan and PSG. That was a tough one. Although third, they would have dropped into the Europa, so we'll pay attention to that. Norwich actually ended up second in the... Norwich beat PSG. By the way, I just love the idea of, depending on who was there at the time, I wonder if we can actually see the matches no, you can't see the matches anymore, I don't think. I would just love to see who lined up against Norwich there. This Carroll Road hosting possibly Mbappe. Just a wonderful image. That's a tough group. Liverpool, Dortmund, Juventus and then Lille. The poor sods who had to deal with all three of them. So Norwich actually got through that one uh, and then ended up losing to Barcelona. Fair enough. London didn't avenge them, but Manchester finally did. Following year, so Brighton end up 
third in their group, pretty much dominated by Dortmund and Milan that one. Although third with three points drops into the Europa League somehow. We'll pay attention to those, of course, when we go to that level. Uh, Newcastle bomb their group. Barcelona, Milan, Marseille. It's not the easiest of groups, so let's be honest. Who did they actually beat? Marseille. That one makes sense. Two draws, though. Away at Milan and home to Barcelona. Two credible draws. We'll take it. And the most recent season saw Brighton actually finish ahead of Milan and Celtic. So that's good going. Level on points, Milan. Better goal of his, but his head to head that matters here. So, yep, beat them 3 0 and drew the way. So that's how they ended up second. We will check how far they got. Oh, Leicester got out of that one as well. It was Leicester and Brighton. Sorry. In fact, Leicester actually made it to a quarter final. That's the first time we've seen one of the non top three get past the first knockout round. Well done, Leicester. And only beaten on away goals as well. 9 0 aggregate Madrid Dortmund. That's shambles after they 7 1 aggregate Marseille. Well, high aggregate wins in this one. So Manchester must have dropped down into the Europa 1 and ended up winning this. The only English winner in the, in the first 10 years, in fact. And it happens to be one of our now new big three. Uh, Leicester actually got to the final the year before and the year before that. God's sake, Leicester. Twice in a row beating on penalties after a one all draw. Incredible. To two different Spanish teams, I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, those were the first times. I think Wolves got in the first five years, but then Leicester twice losing to Sociedad and Valencia on penalties. Oh, that's so unfortunate. But uh, Manchester avenging against Valencia the following year. So the first of the new years sees Norwich top their group, Newcastle top their group. And this is when Euro Cup 2 comes in. We won't look at the groups for that, but how far did our teams get Norwich? Had a bye in the first round, lost to Marseille. Leicester dropped down from the Champions League that year. Beat Galatasaray, lost to Villarreal. Not doing very well with the Spanish clubs, are Leicester. Newcastle bypassed round one and ended up losing to Fenerbahce. Of course they did. But not a great year for England that year. Following year, Wolves topped their group, Leicester topped their group. So at the very least, the English teams are topping their group seemingly on a regular basis in the Europa League. And if we bob it on tree again for this round, Leicester bypassed round one, only to end up against PSG. Napoli PSG and then Juventus in the semis. That's a incredible draws in the Europa League that year. Wolves bypass around one goal past Celtic and then Kiev and then ended up losing to Roma in the semis. So good run by Wolves there. Not quite the final though. Whereas in the Champions League did not finish third clearly either. How to keep track of who's in whose year. Brighton should pop up at some point. I don't remember that one. So Leicester second in their group to Sociedad. Lost both times as well. It's just, I think this is the year they finish, end up in the final against them as well, isn't it? They do not enjoy the Spanish teams, do Leicester. Uh, Norwich topping their group though, no problems there. The fact we're only seeing two English teams in these group stages is a pretty good indicator of how well we fared in the Euro Cup 2, i.e. not well. But again, we'll check the tree for this one. Norwich, actually, Norwich-Leicester was a semi-final, so we were guaranteed a final with an English team there. That's a bit for Leicester got past Brighton as well, who of course dropped down that year. Brighton got passed by Ajax as well, which is good, good on them. Leicester did beat Bilbao, so they have found any best of an English, a Spanish team. So, well done. And then two English ones before San Sebastian happened. Again, they lost them three times that year. There's a rivalry going there. Leicester top of their group the following year. Bournemouth top of their group. And not seeing a third team again. So we knew Leicester got to the final against Valencia. Past Bilbao. The very least, they seem to be han handling Bilbao quite nicely. Bournemouth didn't, though. Leon in their run as well. Fenerbahce, of course, bested Newcastle a couple of years earlier. And then the most recent year, Newcastle top of their group, winning all six games. Good job. I think that's the first time we've seen someone win all six. Oh no, of course, Manchester missed out on the Champions League that year. Entirely. They topped their group with by winning all six, but we can't expect that of that one. So how did Newcastle do? Because we know Manchester won it. So where were Newcastle knocked out? Lazio in the second round. Of course, they bypassed the first one in the first place, so... Yeah, they got knocked out by Lazio. Not good there. But Manchester besting PSG Milan. I mean, shout out to Manchester, though. They had essentially what was a Champions League run to the final, where Valencia awaited. PSG and Milan in their way. Sassuolo. Yeah, fair enough. And yeah, we've had no winners since Leicester winning the first one in the Euro Cup 2. Wolves actually bested by Napoli in the final year. And the fact that we got beaten in the final, I will go look past the last five. Uh, Brighton beaten in the year before. And that's it. So we were just before the 2024 European Championships when I did the last video. So they've been done, of course. The group stages on this are looking mostly okay for once. Luxembourg getting out of a group. Shout out to Luxembourg. But for the most part, this seems sensible. Although I feel like we're missing a major team and I can't work out who it is. Belgium. Belgium are missing, if my eyes are not deceiving me. So Belgium didn't even get through the qualifiers, somehow. But England topped their group. And then we'll bob it on tree form to see how it went. England won it in 2024. See, this is part of what we want to be paying attention to. Because 2024, five years in, first regens will be getting into their early 20s at this point. If they start at 16, they'll be 21. So they'll, be start they'll start featuring in that team. You saw, um, I think it was Charlie Hawkins, wasn't it? In that first team 
when we looked at it. And part of the European winning squad, potentially, as well. Besting Turkey, Spain, Portugal and France. That's a tough run-in. And I'm intrigued to see what the squad looks like now. And of course, 2028's happened as well. Wales top of their group with Ireland. Belgium bottom of it. Still not doing too well, but at least they got here this time. England top their group with France in it. The Dutch and the Germans in that group. Scotland beating Spain. I think all the major ones are here. And once again, if we just bob ourselves on the tree, England won it again. Albania, Norway, Portugal and France. Deja vu on the last two rounds there, but okay. We might be able to even look at this last match because this is the most recent. Full match details are not available for this fixture. Of course they're not. Played in Edinburgh. So England doing well in Europe. I can see the holders of Spain on the World Cup, so they haven't won that at the very least. Oh God, this is when all the groups go weird, isn't it? Right, okay, 2026 hadn't happened at this point. This is when this is when the first rounds are essentially pointless. Just looking for any major casualties in third places here. Chile, England topped their group, had Syria in it. Jamaica, after topping their group at the last World Cup, came bottom of this one. Nigeria, behind Scotland and New Zealand, a bit of a surprise, I suppose. That's about it, though. No, that's about it. It's probably more people who missed out entirely, which I obviously can't quite tell at this stage. The tree's a little bit ridiculous, but actually, England got to the final. Hang on, we've won a penalty shootout. What? We won two penalty shootouts in a row. Vengeance against Croatia. Albania, we seem to end up playing a lot. 7-0 against New Zealand. Okay, but we, we got past Albania in the Euros. Scotland got to the second round, where they ended up 5-3 against Brazil. I mean, that's not what this is about, of course, but it's all about England, mostly. So it's two European Championships and a World Cup final. Have I fixed England? Is this how is this how we fix England? Someone dropped the papers for combining all these clubs now. 7-0 Holland Japan as well. That's a tough one. Right, we need to look at England now. Valverde's manager of England. Second in the world these days. Who behind? Brazil. I mean, I'd accepted Spain. Two European Championship wins and a World Cup final still doesn't get England to the top. Bit harsh. Belgium are 23rd in the world these days. They've had an issue. Behind Morocco and Australia. What have Australia done? Interesting. I saw Nigeria are ninth, though actually the finishing bottom of their group was a bit of a surprise then. So if we bob it up with clubs again on the main squad, we can see where everyone is. And yes, I can see immediately that the majority of them are at Manchester, London or Liverpool. Some of them new gens, of course. Courtney Jackson. Honestly, not sure why he's in the team. He's good, but he's not 76 million good, is he? I mean, he's fast. Tesfar Fleming, left back. He looks pretty decent, though. Charles Benson at London. Solid. Yeah. Good physicals, good mentals. Danny Wiles, left winger, pretty good. Maybe decent striker as well. Plays both. Uh, Manchester don't have any new gens. Schalke appeared to have one. Decent goalkeeper. Is he first choice? Marco, I can't pronounce that. Suaranimi. Yep, okay. And Matt McGinn. Possibly related to John, who knows, but he is English. And look at those physicals for that central defender. 17 tackling, 13 marking, 15 heading, 11 passing. Not quite good on the ball playing. Otherwise, I'm not sure there's new gens. Oh, Bayliss is another new gen. He's made it in. He's a decent goalkeeper as well. Not valued a lot, though, but he's at Blackburn. I don't know where Blackburn were. I'm not sure they were Premier League. Oh, they were. They are now. Didn't look at the other uh, divisions. We all have a quick look at that afterwards. Uh, Bob Downer to the under-21s. Bit more spread out. Ben was on loan from Brighton. So Brighton have a fair few then. So Brighton appears to be one of the better recipients. Because we did wonder about the distribution of the new gens now that there's only one London in particular, where do they all go? Because they can't even go to like other London clubs. It's not, I didn't just merge the Premier League London clubs, I merged all of them. It's not like they can end up at like Millwall or Charlton or whatever, and then suddenly see them rise through the ranks. No, it seems Brighton have done well out of this. I'm obviously not going to look at all of these guys, but value wise, I can see David Oakley, 54 million he's worth. Okay. Now see, I think he looks, I think this Kasim Daly looks better. 16 finishing, finally a striker with more than 15 finishing. Not that, I mean, not that that's everything, but all the other ones were surprisingly low. I am curious. Now, see, this lad is contracted to them, and he was genned in, seemingly, at Bayern Munich. But then again, you do get English new gens in Germany anyway. Schalke with one that started at Portsmouth. But a few more of them seem to be at least making their way over to Germany, either by loan or just on purpose in general. This lad on loan from Liverpool is in Italy. Burton have one? Hello? On loan from Wolves. Damn it, I was really hoping someone lower down had a de really decent one. On loan from Birmingham. So they do still seem to be mostly in Premier League clubs. Hello, this one's actually contracted to Birmingham, an under-20s keeper. He's not great, but at the very least it's not a Premier League club. That's the first one we've seen. But if you do arrange it by club, London, Manchester, Liverpool, six of them, rest of them, in other clubs. It does seem to be a little bit more spread out the lower you go, which is most curious. Depending on how, obviously we don't have any of them on loan as such, but go further down, they've got 
more of them on the Blackpool there. I was on loan. Here at Swansea. I don't know where these guys are these days. One crew, perhaps, is he on loan? Yeah, contracted to crew. So it does seem to spread out the you go. Now, the one thing I was curious about is how the clubs near London have done in general. And this almost weirdly makes it look like I've intentionally decided to do the rest of the leagues now. Because I was intrigued to know how the ones near London get on. Because theoretically, they will be the ones that pick up the stragglers, opposed to sort of like your mill walls and what have you. It'll be your older shot. Is that near? I feel like that's not too far. Cambridge isn't too far. So the championship looks like this. Uh, Lincoln relegated. That's unfortunate. Gillingham have made their way up here. Northampton have made their way up here. Colchester in the championship these days. The promotions and relegations seem to be mostly between the clubs that were already up there. When we started this, you've Middlesbrough, not too far off. Nottingham have been up there at some point. Sad to see them back down. Bristol started there, Sheffield started. Wigan, though, I think that's the first time Wigan have been up. Mansfield in the Championship as well. League One looks like this. Uh, Fylde have made, York have made their way to League One. Of course, they started in League Two, but nice to see them up here. Three teams that started in the Championship have been promoted up this year. Carlisle have been... Re Why are Carlisle always relegated when we look? Actually, there was one surprising one there. Preston mid-table. A team that obviously championship in real life before the merging happened, so therefore they're one of the better re reputation teams at the start of this. The fact that they've been relegated and now mid-table is an interesting one. And League 2 looks a little bit like this. Just double-checking none of the annihilated teams that made their way up here again. Nope, we're good, I think. So Oxford in League 2, which is even more, if we, which is worse than it looks because they start in the championship on this one, so they've been relegated twice. Only real surprising one, and it's not really surprising to you guys because you don't know where these ones started as such for the most part. Uh, Basingstoke. They start in Vanarama South on this one, thanks to all the mergings of the clubs above them. But they did nick into Vanarama South, so they've been promoted twice. So that's good Good, good for them. Order shot promoted from League Two, so they've not done brilliantly well. If there are any near London sides that seem to be doing quite well, let me know. My geography down that area is not particularly good. Peterborough have done reasonably well. It's not super far away. Northampton, I suppose, isn't super far away. It will be interesting to see who's actually picking up these new gens, but I can't tell that for certain, other than the England team. And last but not least, I do want to see, just a quick glance through the manager movements, just to see if any of these... Big managers that end up ended up at non previous top six clubs, of course. So I'm not seeing any here. Steve Bruce is still managing ten years in. Can't click on him. Must have retired. Yes, he has. Danny Cowell in Newcastle is an appointment I really like to see. I don't like to see sacked poor results though. Uh, Danny Cowley, of course, managed my former local team, Lincoln. So the fact he's at my actual supported team, Newcastle, could have written it better. In fact, he's been there six years. He's the one who got him into the Champions League. In fairness, I don't think Newcastle placed too badly last year either, so we're not really seeing any... Hang on, Aaron Ramsey, manager of Sheffield. Yep, managed Lincoln before. Lincoln's everywhere now. This is what I love about football manager. Leonardo Jardim... Okay, that's a fairly big one. Jardim at Birmingham, former Aston Villa. Pochettino at Burnley. I'm going to say this wrong. Uh, Lopetegui at Bristol. Peter Spurs, of course, before that as well. Vincent Company's manager of Southampton. Is he still there? No, he's at Brighton now. Fair enough. Mancini at Leicester. By the way, just in case people are curious of why Zidane was manager of Manchester, it was simply just sacked time for change. Because that's what you do when you want to get rid of Pep Guardiola. How could you ever think time for change when Pep's in charge? He's Valencia manager, because of course. So realistically, we're not really seeing any top, top kind of elite managers like your Pep, like your Mori Mourinho, at least in game. Real opinions notwithstanding. You're not really seeing any of that elite line of managers end up at the other teams that are nicking into the championship, uh, nick nicking into the Champions League just yet. So it's going to be interesting watching that one going forward because part four will be 25 years in the future. There'll be a full 15 more years simulated. I'm going to have to run through that one a lot quicker. Until then, ta -ra.